Are you ready to unlock the new cinematic power of After Effects and create 3D motion graphics like never before? Well, here's all the secrets you need to know to create your own high-end visuals. Let's get started. All right, guys, let's go ahead and create this scene first as we can quickly get a basic rundown on 3D and use the force to create the best lighting, shadows, and texturing. So the first thing you should always do is create your master object using the new mesh sphere tool. Now to use these new features, you can get the After Effects beta from the Creative Cloud. However, if you're watching this video in the future, you might be good to go. Now with a master object ready, the next thing I always suggest doing is creating a very large floor with the new plane tool. You just need to rotate this bad boy by 90 degrees and lower it under your master. And by the way, you can center your 3D objects with layer, transform, center and view, which is just so important to do for 3D. Now, of course, we don't get anywhere in the world of 3D without creating an environment like to cast shadows in our scene. And to make this all look pretty in a moment, try using an HDR that you can get for free with a quick search, or you can just use the one that I'm using in the description below. And this will change the lighting of your scene in a jiffy. Though we'll have to do some manual work to make this look like a 10 in Tennessee. Um, anyway, I'll create a ring with the torus mesh and I'll have this be centered around the circle and this can be easily resized with the mesh options and rotation values and what's cool is that we can animate say the start or end angle and then also animate the Y rotation to have this draw itself in but back to making this look great under materials if we set the roughness to zero percent and increase the metallic parameter we'll get a reflective look additionally for a rose gold color go ahead and select say a peachy type tone and don't forget about the floor by setting both of those values to 100% and the color to white to get a solid matte finish. Great. You know, the power of manual styling is in your hands, but you can also use textures that you can get for free on the Adobe community page, which of course I'll link below. And we can easily load these onto our 3D models and that looks great as well. And the scene is truly coming together and the setup of every other scene will be no problem either. And have no problems by producing great work for my free Premiere Pro and After Effects templates, drag and drop seamless transitions and cinematic motion graphics that you can customize to fit your vision in moments. You can access thousands of templates and presets directly with the Motion Duck extension and and produce masterpiece for yourself and your clients in no time with these countless assets link below if you do pick up anything you will be supporting my channel so thank you very much all right to build out a visually detailed scene this is how we can quickly do that duplicate your master object which should be in the center of your scene and adjust the anchor point not the position to move this away from your sphere because you can now use the rotation values to orbit this around your scene as we create many duplicates and I'll just snag that reflective rose gold look by editing all the spheres at once in the properties panel, which is just the way to go to edit multiple layers at once. Now, if you like, you can create a 3D null object and parent your outside objects to it. Then feel free to animate any of the rotation values to have this move on the outside of the sphere. Perfect. Keep in mind with meshes, you can easily change the mesh type to change your object. But you know, I'm kind of basic, so I'll stick to the spheres that we have and I'll set their roughness and metallic style to 0% and then change the color to white, which gives that clean reflective look while maintaining the color of your choice. And the last thing you should do for your 3D scenes is create a camera. We can add keyframes and animate the position and point of interest by using the Dolly Taurus cursor tool to zoom in or out of the scene. And by using another 3D null object, we can parent the camera to it and animate the Y rotation to have our camera spin around the scene. But this is the gist of creating 3D work in After Effects. Now, let's create some cooler work and to expand on the world of 3D possibilities, we'll create this scene next. So we already have a floor, an environment light, a solid background, and a small sphere. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new shape with the cube tool and making it centered in the scene. But most importantly, lower it so that it sits directly on the floor. From here, we can adjust the width, height, and depth to make a very skinny waisted rectangle. And to round this out better, we can adjust the bevel radius to smooth the edges. Now, lastly, I'll set the color to black and use a low roughness and set the metallic to around 50%. Now, to visualize this best, I'll go ahead and create a new camera and then use the Dolly Taurus Orbit tool to kind of angle away from the center and use the Dolly Taurus Cursor tool to zoom out. Now, to duplicate all this around a circle path, push the X anchor point to move this away from the center 
and then let's set the Y rotation to 90 degrees. And of course, it's time for duplications, but increase the Y orientation by 10 degrees at a time with each duplicate until you complete the circle of rounded squares. You know, the math checks out. But when you're ready again, let's go ahead and connect these shapes to a 3D null object. And this time we'll use a time asterisk 20 expression on the Y rotation to spin this right round. Excellent. We can also use the same technique for the sphere. Just make sure that it's centered and then you can move this anchor point away from the center like so. And you can also animate the X rotation to have this ball look like it's rolling. But like I said, centering is so important and shadows are also equally as important because sometimes you might wanna rotate the light to get the best lighting angle. But whatever you do, don't forget to adjust the render quality and shadow resolution under renderer options. I also highly recommend clicking fit the scene, but keep in mind you don't need to go overboard with these settings so your computer doesn't melt. Anyway, you get this composition in the description below to break down this scene and always be creative.